Hello everyone on the internet YouTube, welcome back to my channel for another video here with me, Tea Addict. Today I am going to be showing you guys how I play a functional school in The Sims 2 using a couple of different mods. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you've got a nice hot cup of tea ready for today's video. Let's jump in and I will show you how I play functioning schools. So to get started, let's talk about mods. So the main mod that I use to play functional schools, and there are a couple of different options. Me personally, I like the mods by Inge Jones at SimLogical. So if you do a Google search for Sims 2 SimLogical school, uh, like so, you will find Sims 2 school dash SimLogical and the school system by SimLogical. So these were a collection of mods that were put together by uh, a great modder, SimLogical in Inge Jones. Uh, worth checking out her entire website if you want to if this is something you're interested in and she has uh, the school system which consists of six main objects the school bell the pupil token the classroom controller the classroom door classroom table and the school workbook you do need to have all of these files to make your school function properly with the exception of one which is actually the door this is in my experience not actually essential for playing schools but if you want to go ahead and download it anyway it's certainly not going to hurt not going to hurt anything. Uh, we also have some add-ons here. We've got the uh, flexi school changer. So this helps you to uh, have different types of schools in your game and have your sims enrolled in different types of schools in your game. You can have prep school, weekly boarding school or flexi school. So weekly boarding school, your kids will disappear for the week and only come home of the weekends uh, if they're enrolled in that. So that's this object here. We've also got the uniform setter, which is a cool object where you can uh, have your sims dress in a school uniform if you want to. Then we've also got um, some information here on what the different types of schools are. So you can homeschool your kids with the flexi school option if you want to. Um, and then we've got a big tutorial here on how to actually set up the school, but I'm going to go through all that with you guys today anyway. Uh, we do also have a couple of extra objects that you might want, and those are on the main institutions page. So if we go ahead and open that one, um, which is here, there is, first of all, the institution sign, which will help you to set up your school if you do play it on a residential lot. It's also just a helpful mod to have. Basically, you can... Uh, enable school and work or you can disable school and work so your carpool or the school bus won't come if you have school and work disabled and your sim won't get penalized whatsoever for missing school or work with this mod so this is just a really handy mod to have in your downloads folder anyway we've got the canteen servery which is a really cool um basically buffet table, uh, institutional door, there's bunk beds, there's all sorts of interesting things. Uh, we've also got some, some patches that you can install, uh, which can help you to assign school rules. So if you don't want your Sims fighting in school, you can uh, set this um, under rules on the school bell, which I will show you. Uh, there's also no smuggled toys, no reading in bed, no stink cutter comments, no puddle splashing, no escapes. Uh, which is more useful for prisoners because uh, they also have a jail mod, which is kind of fun. Uh, I haven't really got my head around that one yet. That's next on my to-do list, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are a couple of things here, but if for the purposes of running a school, you might want to go ahead and also grab the institution sign as well. But so to download these objects, you just need to open up this page here and then that will open up this and you can just click on these zip files, these .zip files that are listed down here, which will help you to download everything that you need. Uh, if you want the institution sign, you need to download it from this page here. This one is a little bit more confusing to download. So this download here is the main sign itself. And then you have to choose, you can choose to have one of the job patches or one of the school patches or one of each um, in your game. So this actually makes the sign work, basically. So I personally use the AL patch job 2009 um, and then I use the school patch AL uh, 201 F basically and there are a couple of clashes that you need to watch out for here so this clashes with two Jeff's school bus bring friend hack and also it clashes with Pescado's AL fixes uh, if you download this bottom file here so I use this one up the top here the AL file uh, and you do need to download those files if you want it to work to stop your sims from having to go to work or school 
But one thing about these modded objects is they're not necessarily super duper pretty. So I will go ahead and load up the game and show you what these objects look like. And I will talk to you a little bit about uh, some alternatives. All right, so here we are in game with a uh, te lovely tester sim lady here. So most of the school objects you will find in miscellaneous, miscellaneous. And here is what they look like by default. So first of all, we have this one here. This is the school bell. And we use this to start and end school. This is the school changer. So this is the one where I can change all the children to be in different schools uh, that if I download this mod and all the add-ons. And then we have this one here is the class controller and we use this to start and end classes. We also have the school crowd controller, which looks like this. And you use this to move your pupils sort of around the, um, around the school and mass, which is quite helpful. Then this one here, this is the pupil token. So this holds the individual pupils details. So you can see that one. And then here we have the school uniform setters. So we can set everyone to wear a gray uniform or a private school uniform if we so desire. Now you can set up a lot of different schools with these mods. You could set up a very, like a custom boarding school if you wanted to, you could set up Hogwarts, you could do whatever you want. You could have all of your, uh, kids and teens move into the school lot and live there and go to school and it's very a very very flexible mod the way that I use it is actually um, on a community lot I have a sim in my neighborhood who will own own the community lot it's government owned but I pretend they you know are, they, are the principal of the school will own the lot um, and then I have all of my kids go there for school when I play that particular sim who owns the school it's a little bit com complicated to talk about, but I promise I will explain everything. But so what I was saying about these meshes, so to set up a school, basically I need to use all of these meshes. Oh, and the door, if I show you the door as well, this is the school door, here it is. Uh, and so this is a weird door, which I don't really understand how it works to be honest, but I think it lets kids in and doesn't let them out or something. I'm not really sure. I tend to just use a regular door and just lock it <laughs> when class is in session, to be honest, but uh, that is the door that you can use. Okay, now continuing on in our tables category, we're gonna find a couple more bits and pieces for the school mod. So here we have the Sim Logical Classroom table. So this classroom controller places work upon this table. Um, and so by default, this is sort of the table that you would use as like the school desks, I guess. So this would spawn classwork on it when you uh, want to run your school basically. Um, but so for me personally, I don't love these meshes. <laughs> so, cause if I was to set up a school, I would then need to go ahead and find extra custom content for like decorating the school. Like I would need like a whiteboard or a, or a blackboard or, um, some different bits and pieces and I would have to sort of hide these meshes somewhere because they're not, in my opinion, that good looking. And the other thing about these meshes by default is that they are only available on a residential lot. So your only option for setting up a school is to set it up on a residential lot. But as I just mentioned, I like to actually set mine up on a community lot and there is a way to do that um, and it does work. So I will show you that in, in a minute. But uh, one day while I was perusing the depths of Garden of Shadows and just looking through old threads and uploads and stuff, I happened upon uh, this uh, post here. This is from Christmas in July 2020 Gifts and Stocking Stuffers. And this is by Crisps and Kerosene, who is a really fantastic Sims 2 creator. Um, and they got a gift from Alfred Askew, who uh, remeshed most of the objects that we are looking at here. Oh, and if we, oh, sorry, I forgot to show you as well, the Sim Logical Institution sign. So here's that one as well. And so we can enable work in school or we can disable work in school. This also does come with a second model, which is, why have I got snow here? The snow is very annoying. Hold on, there we go. Uh, so there is an alternate model, which is the blue hydrangea bush. Uh, or you can have it as this sign. Sorry, but yes. So this post says, I personally always loved Simlogical school set, but the meshes were a little too utilitarian and took me out of the game. So I made them more attractive using meshes from Around the Sims 2, The Sims 4 and Living Dead Girl. For the sake of sharing of the sharing thread, the set and instructions on how to use it are found here. So this just shows you how to use the school. So instead of having uh, this object here as the school bell, 
we can download this one instead and have this beautiful big kind of school bell thing here. And yes, yeah, so the institution sign, uh, you can use that one too. So then if we scroll down, we've also got some replacement options here for the uh, crowd controllers. So the crowd controllers in the original mod look like this, just this random gray plaque thing. Sorry, I keep grabbing them and disappearing. Yes, this random gray plaque here. So instead of that, we can download this set and pick any of these options. So we can have this little sign saying office this way, this little sign, or we can have this school clock. Um, and this clock is the one that I personally use because I like it. And then Alfred also uh, retextured the classroom door with some different textures. So you can download that as well if you want to. If we keep scrolling down, the student token object, which is this one here, he didn't change very much, but he did make it shiftable, which is always nice. Then we also have um, the classroom controller replacement. And this is my favorite part of this is that he's replaced the classroom controller with this blackboard. So instead of uh, this object here, this little yellow thing with a book in it, you could download this and you already have a blackboard ready to go to use with your school. Then we've also got some homework place uh, clones. The homework place, I don't think I showed you. I don't even know if I downloaded it, to be honest. Oh, so you can download the school class place as an alternative to this table. So this is just random bits of work that kind of d appear on the table. Sorry, I should have downloaded that. <laughs> but yeah, you can get um, Alfred's replacements, which are some updated meshes extracted from The Sims 4. So this is really cool. And I do highly recommend if you want to run functional schools with Inge's mods, you go ahead and download this set here from Alfred. So you can download this. You just got to keep scrolling down uh, to here, this download button. Uh, it's a box link. If you haven't had trouble with box links, by the way, and it's not loading and it says www. Change it to app.box.com, just by the way, it's a helpful tip. Hit this download button. And here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the game and here's my school folder and here's my download. So I'm going to go ahead and replace some of these objects. So the school bell, I'm going to get the school bell and you have pictures in here of like swatches. So you can see exactly what you're downloading. Um, and now most of these are not default replacements as well. So you can actually have both options in your game if you want to, just as an important note. I think he says that here, yeah, the institution sign and school bell are clones and can be used alongside the originals. So that's a good thing to know. So you can have both of them if you want to. So I'm going to pop the school bell in there. Then the school door I'm going to leave because I'm happy with the original school door. Um, let's get the traditional sign so I can show you that one. The crowd controllers. So I'm going to just get the wall clock. But as I said, there are heaps of different signs that you can use as well. Um, and some of these are actually mesh replacements. So you do need to watch out for that. Um, the school, the wall clock, I believe, is a clone. It says here, IJ crowd controller clone. Uh, so that one's fine. But then these mesh replacements, if you download them, the original one won't appear. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the classroom controller, the blackboard, I'm going to get that one. This is also a mesh replacement. So I'm going to then go ahead and delete the original class controller. School, okay, this one here, school class controller. So I'm going to delete, whoops, not delete the name, delete that file. And then we've also got homework books. So these are fun. Uh, so you can set down uh, schoolwork for Sims to do. Uh, we can also download, so this download does include some school desks and chairs, which are quite nice. Oops, sorry. These ones that you see here, so we can also chuck those in so you can uh, see those. And then there's some extra random stuff that uh, he has included as well. The pupil token uh, as shiftable, you can download, you can grab this part of it as well if you want to, but if you have Lamar's shift everything mod, um, the pupil to token is shiftable anyway. Okay, so let's load up the game and I will show you guys these improved meshes. <laughs> All right, so you can see part of it already. This is the classroom controller, which is now this beautiful blackboard instead of the wall token that it was before. Um, but so if we again go into miscellaneous miscellaneous, this is where we're going to find most of our objects here. So here is our new school bell. So this thing I just think is really nice. I like to put it out the front of the school and uh, with this you can set the principal of the school. You can set school rules, which we talked about before. So we can ban fighting, for example, and then we can start school and end school. We'll cover all that in a minute here. And then we've also got uh, this is the class 
uh, the crowd controller. So I put these all over my school and I can, as I said, move all the students around en masse <laughs> to make them sort of go into different places in the school. So that is a very helpful object. And then if we go back into our tables category, we've now also got, um, so we've still got this classroom table, but then we've also got these, uh, uh, so these objects here function as a place for the kids to sit and do schoolwork, which is very, very cool. Right, now, as I mentioned, these meshes by default, uh, I don't think are available on community lots. Let's jump in and I will double check just to make sure I've actually got that right. No, so most of them are not. So here we are on a demo community lot, which is rather khaki wampus. And the only objects that I can actually get here are the uniform setters. Um, let's see if I can actually get the... Oh yeah, and the homework places are available too, which is good, uh, as well as the table. But a lot of the really important meshes are not actually available on community lots. So you can totally set your school up on a residential lot and not worry about this next section. And you can have your principal kind of live on the same lot as the school. You could live, have it be like a little school house. So they live upstairs and the school is downstairs. Um, you could hide a bedroom for them or something. I don't know. When I was a kid, I actually thought that the, the teachers lived at school. Um, I don't know if anyone else did, but if you're like me and you want to be able to play on a community lot, there's a really simple thing that you can do to make that happen. So I'm going to exit the game and I'm going to show you something in SimPE, which is a really helpful tip to know if you ever want to have an object available on a community lot when it is not currently. So the homework places were actually available on community lots, so we don't need to worry about that one. The institution sign, I'm actually not sure I forgot to check. So we'll check this one. No, so right now this is not available on community lots. Okay. So what you need to do in order to enable something to be available on a community lot is you need to open the mesh. So right here, we've got a lot of recolor files. And then this file here is the actual mesh file. You can see because it says the word mesh <laughs> um, in it. So let's go ahead and open this file. I shouldn't have closed it. I don't know why I closed it. Let's reopen the file. And then you need to go into the objd file. So the object data file, which is over here. You need to click on the file itself. You need to have plugin view enabled in your SimPE window. And then uh, catalog sort is fine. We can leave that one as is. If we go over to the raw data tab, you'll see a bunch of random letters and numbers that make no sense. You wanna go over here and hit decimal and then all of a sudden things look a little bit less terrifying and do make sense. Scroll down a little bit until you see this line here, line uh, 0064, which says community sort. Right now this value is set to four. I don't know what these values mean, but I can tell you that if you change this to 128, it will enable it for community lots. I don't know why. I don't understand the numbers. I, don't, I can't tell you the, the logic behind it, but uh, all I know is that this works. So we're going to change this to 128, hit commit and save, and that will now be available on community lots. Uh, so what we'd have to do is basically go through um, each of the meshes. So the school bell is another one here. Let's have a look. Change that community sort value to say 128. I think 132 works as well, um, but I, I can't remember to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we're going to change this to 128 commit and save. And this is going to enable all of our objects to appear on community lots, which is going to be super duper helpful. So I'm going to open up the blackboard mesh replacement as well. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this with all of my meshes. And then we're going to go in and we're going to set up a little school. Okay, so all of my objects are now enabled for community lots, which is very, very helpful. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to load up a school that I've already built and is already up and running so that I, you can see how I run it. But the next step would be to actually go into your game and build yourself a little school. Um, if you are not much of a builder, there are some schools available online that you can download. And as a bonus for today's video, I'm actually going to upload the school that I'm going to show you uh, that you can use in your hoods if you want to. And you'll find a link for that in the video description. I'm actually gonna upload two different versions for you, one that is a bit smaller and one that is a bit bigger. So uh, if you're interested in downloading one of the schools that I use, you can go ahead, check that out in the video description.
All right, everybody. So here we are. This is my uh, off-camera build a city challenge called Hanson River. And this is the town that I'm going to use to show you the schools today. So I have two, two schools in Hanson River, which are over here. I have this uh, primary school and I have this high school. I have not yet set up the high school because while I have built the school, my Sims have not actually paid for the school yet. So we're not actually using the school, it's just here. But so uh, today we're gonna jump into the Hanson River Area School Junior Campus to have a little play around with the schools. So as I mentioned, the way I, that I do this is I build my schools as community lots, and then I have a Sim in the neighborhood who owns the community lot, who is the principal of the school, um, and they basically get a big government stipend to like purchase the school. But then if they were to ever sell the school on to someone else, that, that money would go back to the government. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but so my teachers in this neighborhood are the Dillon family, Owen and Abby Dillon. They actually just had a little daughter. So we'll have to get her a babysitter, I guess, <laughs> when we go to school right now. Uh, but so we're going to jump into their household um, and I will show you how I play through a school week. All right, so we've hired a local girl to uh, take care of our child for us. And I usually have my Sims uh, who work in the school set off at about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so my schools are based very much on, I guess, Australian schools, my experience with Australian schools. Um, and so the, the hours that they work at school, the teachers tend to be there from about 8 a.m. till about like four in the afternoon, but the actual school kids are there from nine till three. And we'll, we'll sort of cover more of the Australian ins inspiration when we actually get to the school. But so these Sims are both actually employed as elementary teachers, as you see here. So they will be at work in the neighborhood when they should be at work, if that makes sense. Like if someone was to try calling them at uh, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday, they would get the notice that they are at work. And um, I pay them, the government pays them the wage that they would get uh, from, I guess, being teachers. So uh, each week I've got this written down in my spreadsheet, which I should have open. That would probably really help me. So this spreadsheet is heavily inspired by Annie. Love you, Annie. And um, yeah, so I've, I've got sort of a list here of people who work in the school, what they get paid. I've got school kids. I've got class timetables. I've got all sorts of things uh, in here. But yeah, so Owen and Abby are, Owen is the principal, Abby is a teacher. We have an office lady who is Tosha Loveday, formerly known as Tosha Go. Then we have a music teacher, an art teacher who come in certain days of the week to do uh, extra classes with the kids. We also have a, a spot for a PE teacher, but I don't have any uh, Sims who are good for that role yet. So I haven't filled that role yet. But, and then I've got down here what their wage would be as well. So per week, um, if we just open a calculator, cause I can't do maths. Per week, Owen and Abby should each earn uh, 3,210 simoleons from work. So because when I play them, I never actually send them to work. I send them to their school. At the end of the week, I sort of kaching them there and family funds their money up to what it should be in order to make sure they actually do get paid a, a proper wage <laughs> as a teacher. I hope that makes sense. That's just a little bit of extra information there. But yeah, so I do have the uh, institution sign pop down here. So this is the hydrangea bush. This is a default replacement by T Vicky Sims. Uh, so if I toggle the model, you'll see here, this is the, um, the little institution sign. So I have disabled work and school so that the carpool doesn't come for them and they don't get penalized for missing work. So yeah, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to have them go somewhere. Uh, we've got the babysitter here, so that's all good. And he's just got to put down the newspaper. There we go. Abby's going to come with us because she works with us too. And then we're going to go to the school. They drive a little uh, Toyota Prius, as you see here. I thought it was a cute little car for a teaching couple <laughs> to own. And all right, so here come my, my beautiful couple. Uh, I have the functional car parks mod, as you see here. So they're gonna roll in, they're gonna park their car. First thing I do when I get to the school is I pause. <laughs> but so let me show you guys this little school. So you'll notice here is my big uh, school bell object. So the way this works is, as I sort of showed before, you set a school principal, uh, so that is Owen. So you can remove him as the principal and set any sim that you want to have as your principal. Um, I've set school rules, so I've got a couple of things that are uh, banned. I've got 
fighting band and I've got pillow fighting band uh, because I find pillow fighting really annoying. Uh, but so to show you guys the school, this is a bigger one. The other school that I play is a little smaller. Uh, but to show you guys the school, this is the sort of front office area here. So uh, when Tosha arrives, she will sit in here and write articles on the computer. And she'll also, uh, she also kind of doubles as the janitor. So she'll go around and clean up the school as well. So that is sort of where she works in the office there. This is Owen's room, uh, his principal's office. So when he is not working, running his class, uh, he comes in here and does some extra work. Uh, then we also have a little staff room here for the teachers and teaching staff. So a little kitchenette, little TV, little whiteboard, notice board. And we also have a little staff toilet in here as well. So uh, then if we go over this way, this here is the library. So sometimes the kids have sort of library time where they come in here, they can read, they can use the computers, they can work on skills, just chat and socialize. Uh, and here you'll notice one of the uh, school crowd controllers that I showed you before. So I have these in most of the rooms in the school and I also have them outside most of the rooms in the school. Yeah, so this is the library with this little uh, computer nook as well. This here is the junior primary classroom. So this is like where the younger kids in the neighborhood come in and have school. So we've got lots of just sort of decorations and uh, school bags and all sorts of things. And then the modded objects that you will notice in here, we have uh, these pencils here. These are the uh, schoolwork place objects, which is part of the mod. We have a class controller here, a crowd controller, sorry. This one is the class controller, which I'll show you in detail in a minute. I do also use a little bit of uh, this mod. This is the Sophie David Opportunity Pack lectern and books, but I don't use these as much because I find them way OP. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, over here, we have a little detention table. So if one of the kids gets in trouble, they have to sit over here in the corner and uh, do work and read this notice about good behavior, I guess. Uh, but so this is, yeah, this is their, their classroom. And this is uh, Abby's classroom. She teaches the younger kids. Back here, we have another classroom, which is Owen's classroom, and he teaches the older kids. So this classroom is a little bit more mature. There's sort of more, uh, less decorations, less artwork on the walls. I would like to put up more artwork, but I was actually waiting for the kids to actually make some artwork for me to put on the walls. Uh, so this is his classroom that he uses, and you'll notice the same objects in here. We have the uh, crowd controller, the classroom controller, the opportunity pack lectern, and this is his desk over here in the corner. Then over here we have, this is like a multi-use classroom. So at the moment it's set up for art class. And then in the storeroom here, you'll also notice we have some uh, keyboards, some extra chairs and some workout mats <laughs> because depending on what day of the week it is, this classroom gets set up to do different extra classes. Uh, so I was talking before about having uh, some of the Bertino girls, Giselle and Hannah, who come in and do music and art lessons. So on Tuesdays is music and on Thursdays is art. Um, so this classroom will get used for those classes at that point in time. Uh, if we come back sort of down this hall area here and go out this way, this is the playground here. Um, and the kids come out here during recess and lunch. Actually, no, that's not correct. I only have one midday break for my kids at school. <laughs> um, poor things, they don't get two breaks like in, in real life, they only get one. And that's just purely for timing. I just find that if they get two breaks, it takes up way too much time in the day. But so this is their little uh, area where they can come and eat. I have this uh, modded menu board object uh, by William Howe that they can order food from. And then we have another crowd controller here, got some bathrooms. And then out the back here, we also have a little uh, garden space. It's been winter, so the garden is empty right now, but uh, once a week, the classes also come out and learn to garden as well so that's kind of fun uh, and then over this way we have this sort of sports area so we've got some basketball uh, areas and an area for soccer as well so this is where they come and do PE if the weather is nice the other really important mod that I will point out is this little clock here this is uh, M Mariola's Majola's uh, time control clock I don't never know how you say it wait let me let me double check Marola Marola's time con control clock there you go and this is something that I got after watching the way Annie plays school um, 
so this uh, slows down time or speeds up time. So normal time is uh, 100%. I have this set at 50%. So time passes a lot slower here at my school lot. This is essential for me because otherwise the school day just goes by way too quickly. Um, then in the principal's office, you're going to notice here on the wall, we have a bunch of little pictures of some kidly winkies. So this is the pupil token. Um, and you can see here, I've got mine sort of uh, stacked up. So these are shiftable with the shift everything mod. And so the way that these work is for any kids in your neighborhood, playable or towny, you go, can go ahead, click on the token, click on enroll. And if there are any children available, um, there'll be an option here for children. I've got all my children enrolled, so I'm only able to enroll teenagers. <laughs> but yeah, so if there's a child available to enroll, you'd click enroll child and then um, click on their name to enroll them in the school. You can then also in assign them to a class. So there's four different classes you can assign your kids to. So I have two classes in mine and that is the older kids and the younger kids. The way that I divvy that up is how many days away they are from becoming a teenager. So five days or less till becoming a teenager, they are in the older kids class. Um, five, six days or more till becoming a teenager. My kids are kids for, I want to say nine days. Yeah, nine days. They, they are in the junior primary class, if that makes sense. So yeah, class number one is the, the little kids. Class number two is the big kids. Um, and so you can assign them to classes. If you wanted to, you could have four classrooms on the go at a time. I think that would be absolute chaos. I just have two, but there you go. Um, and so then once all your students are enrolled and you're ready to kind of start the school day, I'm also going to summon Tosha so that she comes into work. The way you start the school day is you click on the bell and you say start school. When you do that, all of your students will appear. You can control them all. They are all selectable in your, in your menu here. Uh, and then we can go ahead and get the school day started. But before I do that, let me show you, um, the other mods. So this one here, the classroom controller, this blackboard. So what you can do here is set your room to be a home room for one of the classes. So I have this set to be the home room for class one. You can also set a teacher. So right now, Abby Dillon is the teacher. If she wasn't, you would be able to set assign a teacher. You can timetable um, work for the kids if you want to. I find this a little bit glitchy, so I prefer to just use my spreadsheet, but there are two different types of class time that you can schedule. You can schedule grade work or you can schedule classroom period. So grade work, uh, the kids will come in, work will spawn on their desks, they will sit down and attempt to do their work. Classroom period, they'll kind of just come and hang out. And what that will mean is that they can socialize or if it's art class, for example, they could come in and do their art lesson or um, anything like that. So I have my kids timetabled. So for class one, uh, Monday in the morning, they have classroom assembly. So they just come in and have free classroom time. They chat, they uh, say hi and do all that kind of thing. And then in the afternoon, they have reading time in the library. For class two, they have the same thing on a Monday morning is just class time. And then in the afternoon, they do grade work. And then you'll see here, I've got different. Um, oh, do you know what I just realized is that I have these days around the wrong way. <laughs> Music lesson is Thursday and art lesson is Tuesday. My bad. But yeah, so on Tuesdays, uh, class one has art in the morning. Class two has art in the afternoon, so on and so forth. And I just work this out. Um, I just thought it was fun. I don't know. But so, yeah, you can, the way you do this is you select which, which subject you want to run in your class. So we're going to be running classroom period. So I'm going to select that on both of these boards. And then we will be able to uh, start classroom period for class one. Now these crowd controllers, we can also call specific classes to specific areas. So I can go ahead and call all pupils over to here. And one thing that I recommend doing um, on a community lot in particular, if you run your school on a community lot, is you want to have your teachers greet, very inappropriate. Excuse me. You want to have your teachers greet their students um, 
and like say hello to them. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working and I don't know why. That's all right, let's call. Okay, in that case, we'll call class one into their classroom here and we'll have Abby come in. Owen is gonna come in over here and we're gonna call class two into this classroom. There we go. Oh, I guess it wasn't working because they were technically already outside. I guess that makes sense. So yeah, uh, the first thing that I do is go ahead and have the teachers say hello to their students. And this is important. I don't use the classroom doors, as I said before. So I don't know if it's different with when you actually do use the classroom doors. I just use regular doors. And when class is in session, I lock the doors for everyone. <laughs> so they're locked in there. And that is simply because otherwise the kids are constantly just running around everywhere and it's chaos. The other thing that I usually do also, which I forgot to mention, is you'll notice that when it when your sims spawn onto a lot, they always spawn with their bladder half empty and it just bugs the crap out of me because then come lunchtime, all of them need to go to the toilet. So what I tend to do is using the uh, sim blender, which I have here, I go to motives, bladder, and I say everyone full. <laughs> So everyone gets a full bladder to start off the school day because I just don't want to waste time having the kids going to the toilet all the time. It just drives me nuts. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to have Abby say hello to her kids. Um, hopefully this class and their teacher are all coming in here. Oh, Owen's stuck in there. Oh no, Owen, what are you doing in there? Okay, I'm going to have to... Uh, is that not working? Okay, I'll just unlock the door real quick. Can you run here, please? There we go. Okay. Now we're going to lock the door again. <laughs> now I do get a lot of routing fails uh, when the kids first come into the classroom. And that's just because I have this sign right above this area here where there's like books and stuff. Uh, that's my bad. That's just a, a bad design on my part. I should really just move the clock to here so they have room to stand in front of the clock. So as I said, I'm going to get the teachers to all say hello to their pupils. Going to lock this door as well. Say good morning. <laughs> and as you can see, they're all just kind of playing, hanging out. They're going to talk to each other. They're going to do whatever. So with the classroom periods, what you can do is... No, don't... What are you trying to do? Were you trying to dance with this kid? Pfft. Anyway, what you could do is just let the kids have free reign. Or this is a good opportunity. You could use the Opportunity Pack Desk and Lectern so I could activate the school book and uh, have Abby come and teach a lesson from the school book. And then, um, same with Owen, activate the school book and have him teach a lesson. And so now some of the kids will be good and sit down and start listening and this will increase their uh, school grade. As I said, this mod is super OP. It increases their grade way too quickly in my opinion. Um, so the other thing you can do is you can use some of the different books. So I also have here, uh, let me just click on Abby and say deactivate school book. So I've also got the epic and the science journal. So I could activate the epic and she could tell a story if she had the right skills, which apparently she doesn't. Oh yeah, tell a story. There we go. So she can also tell a story from this, which will increase their like enthusiasm for certain things as well. Um, the science journal, they can like teach a science class, I guess. And then all the kids will gain some science enthusiasm as well as grade points. The other thing that I hate about this mod is um, the constant notifications as well. <laughs> but so, anyway, let me show you guys as well what it looks like when you do grade work rather than classroom periods. So I'm going to deactivate the epic. I'm going to say grade work and we're going to uh, start grade work instead. So now what you'll see happen is that on these uh, spots over here, grade work has appeared. And so the kids are now going to attempt to sit down and do some homework or some grade work. This is a lot more balanced. So the kids will sit here do and do some work and they won't sort of get tons and tons of school experience, uh, which is better. And then your teacher can also actually uh, check their work, help the kids clear the, the work away. Or if the kid like Jerry over here has wandered off, they can also call Jerry back to his work. And this is why it's important to greet the kids in the morning, because if you haven't said good morning to the kids, if you haven't had your teacher greet the kids, uh, these interactions don't, don't tend to work. So let's see if we can help Sophie here with her classwork. 
Okay, so she's going to hopefully... Can you please help, Sophie? Mm, it's not working super well. I think this mod tends to work better if you have the kids sit at individual desks. I like to have them sit at, like, join desks. But there we go. So, third time's a charm. She is now instructing Sophie and helping her to get her work done. The other kids you'll notice get up and down all the time. This is just a feature of the mod. A feature. It's very annoying. If you don't like it, have your kids sit down at the homework place instead. So we're going to pretend that Paul has gotten in trouble for um, constantly walking away from his work. We can create work for him and have him come over here and do some work. And he will sit down and do his work. He will not constantly get up from his uh, from his desk. Hey everyone, it's Editing Beth here. I just realized as I was editing the last clips that I didn't actually explain very well the difference between the where the grade work appears and those homework places. So the grade work only appears on either the school class table or the school class place. So the school class table is, uh, it says here, this is not the same as the homework table. This is a completely separate object to work with the classroom controller. So the homework is a separate thing to the school class places. So those little pencils that I had placed on the desks in the classroom are the school class place objects rather than the homework objects. So the kids will get up a lot when they're doing grade work with the school class place, but if they're using the homework table or the homework objects that you get with the Alfred Askew download, they'll stay put head down and do their homework. So just wanted to clarify that little difference there. Um, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, when they do their homework, instead of like grade work, they are a lot more focused. Uh, one thing I forgot was... Uh, where is Tosha? Oh, here she is. She's just standing over here, just uselessly. Okay. <laughs> I usually make any other workers selectable. Uh, so she's actually going to come down here and do some work. Okay, so I have the uh, morning class usually runs till about... I can't remember if it was 11 or 12. I think I usually have the morning class run till 11. So it's like 9 till 11 is morning class. Then 11 till 1 is lunchtime. And then one till three is afternoon class. So it's kind of separated into those two hour blocks. So we've just passed 11 a.m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the class period. So I'm going to finish class and unlock the door. Same with you. I'm going to deactivate the school book. Uh, oh, we never started classroom period over here. So that's fine. Unlock the door. I also keep any other doors that I don't want the kids going in locked at all points in time. So I don't want them going into the library during lunchtime. I mean, they could. I don't want them going into the spare classroom when it's not in use. So I keep that door locked. Um, but right now it is actually lunchtime. So what we can do is we can again use SimBlender, go motives, uh, hunger, everyone, set it to half. And then all the kiddly winkies are going to be a bit hungry and they're all going to want to come and get some food. One thing I forgot to mention here is that the reason that I don't have like a, a servery uh, where the kids get lunch cooked for them is because that's just not the experience of going to school in Australia, which is what my schools are based on. In Australia, it's way more common to bring a packed lunch from home. Some schools will have like a canteen or a tuck shop where if you're lucky and your parents give you some money, you can go and buy lunch when you're at school. Or some schools will do lunch orders and they'll order lunches from like the local uh, cafe or something. Thing. but yeah it's very uncommon for Australian schools to actually have a full-on cafeteria so my schools in The Sims 2 don't tend to feature those. You also earn money from the uh, opportunity pack desk. <laughs> very very OP mod. Anyway uh, so now all the kiddies are going to come over here they're all going to order themselves uh, some some lunch so I'm going to have them order. Um, I It's on my to-do list to actually uh, customize this object a little bit more so that they can order like just sandwiches from it because I know this mod is customizable and I just haven't done it yet but yeah they can actually I just want them to be able to just get like sandwiches for lunch <laughs> if possible oh, Paul is still doing his work see if they are doing homework they they don't tend to get up and move around but yeah so all the kids are gonna come over and get some food and then the teachers can go ahead head into the staff room and have some uh, food as well so you guys can come in here and then usually uh, at this point Tosha will come outside to be playground monitor 
and watch over the kids as they all have their lunch. So they've all managed to get themselves something to eat, which is great. Quinn, what are you doing? You're just running around. Sophie's having some trouble sitting down at this spot, which is a bit unfortunate. You okay, Sophie? Where are you going? She's like, I can't sit down. Tosh has just stolen Quinn's burger, which is not really appropriate. But anyway, after the kids finish eating, then they get free time to interact with each other and play. Um, they're constantly trying to play cops and robbers and they're constantly rejecting it. And so that none of the kids get along particularly well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I usually have them just play on the playground. I usually honestly don't control the kids very much. Like, like I just kind of let them do whatever they want to do and see what happens because I think it's interesting. But yeah, so um, I'm just going to have Quinn and Jerry actually chat with each other. Um, and then Summer is going to talk with Anna. Um, yeah, their relationship is not the best, but it looks like they're going to play catch together, which is great. So they're going to kind of make friends that way. And then Pearl, why don't you come over and join play on the playground? And Lainey as well, why not? Lainey's actually really good friends with Summer. So that is one relationship I've managed to get. But I love playing active schools because I can have the the kids gain relationships with each other. I love that they all know each other. I love that they can have relationships and get to know the fellow kids in the neighborhood. Now, the way that I handle, I guess, the towny kids is, so for example, I have uh, Lady Pratt, Samuel Beckett, and Anna Good. These kids are all townies. So I just assign them a random age. And when their peers age up into teenagers, I will go ahead and age them up into teenagers as well and replace them within the townie pool so that I, st I always have some townie kids who are available. Um, look at them playing in the playground, they're so cute. Yeah, so that I always have some townie kids who are available uh, to come into the school and then they will get enrolled in the high school instead. So it's coming up on 1 p.m. So you can see how fast the day goes, even with the speed set to uh, 50%. So um, I'm always I'm actually tempted to make it even slower, <laughs> but I'm not sure if that would be a terrible idea. Um, so just for uh, to show you guys the multi-purpose classroom and how I use this, we'll pretend that um, today is actually art lesson for Owen's class. So he's going to get the afternoon off of teaching. So instead of teaching, he's going to come into his office. He is going to write some articles on his laptop and do some work. Um, and I will spawn in the art teacher, which is uh, Hannah Bertino. Uh, so the way I decided to make her the art teacher was basically just that she um, was a local sim with a very high interest and passion in art. So I thought that'd be fun. Um, so here's Hannah. We're going to uh, unlock this classroom. We have to use Owen to do that. So she is going to come over here and just get ready for art class. And then I will use my clock here to call class two. And so what I can have her do is I can have her lecture on fashion uh, using the fashion journal, which or use the wood falcon. I think both of those things um, will she can do a lecture on art and the kids will gain arts and crafts enthusiasm. Or I can have her just come here and paint. Um, and then what I will do is have all of the kids come and paint as well. I can have her instruct the kids in their art hobby. I can have her, um, yeah, kind of do a bunch of different things as the art teacher and just talk to all the kids. So she's going to greet Anna because Anna's come into the room. We're going to greet Pearl. Um, we're also going to get class one. Let's get class one to come and have library time. Why not? So we'll call class one into the library and we'll call you into the library as well. Okay, so Pearl, you can go ahead and start uh, a child painting. And Samuel, you can too. Uh, there you go. Quinn as well, go ahead and start a painting. I'm just going to make sure that class two are all on their way in here because they do tend to get a bit distracted at times. <laughs> uh, I think all of class one is in here. Yeah, class one is only four kids. So again, I'm going to lock the door. <laughs> And then, yeah, they can do whatever they want in the library today for the afternoon, which will be fun. Lainey and Anna are being a little bit rebellious right now. They're not coming to class when they should be. Lainey, 
<laughs> so in this situation, what I could do is actually have Owen as the principal look out his window and see that Lainey's uh, skipping class and have him come out and lecture her. Okay, well, I thought I, I thought I could have him come and lecture her. Let's just have him come and chat with her instead. Unless she's, oh, no, she's on her way to class now. <laughs> but yeah, I might, I might have a little storyline where she's in trouble for being late to class or something like that. Uh, just, just for some fun. Anna's finally here, so let's get her to uh, do a painting. And then Lainey as well can come and do a painting. And then, yeah, so she can pretty much just come and paint herself and I sort of pretend that she's instructing them, teaching them how to do a particular painting or something. And, uh, yeah, all these kids will be increasing their painting skill. Let's check in on what's going on in the library. So Rebecca's reading a book. Abby's reading to Paul, which is quite cute. Obviously, he's requested a story. Uh, Jerry and Sophie are being a little bit disruptive. So... Again, I would probably... I'm going to have to work out why my lecture mod isn't working. <laughs> my chastise mod, I think it is. Um, so usually I would have Abby sort of chastise them and, and get them to work. But uh, let's just have them... So what do you want to do? You want to uh, learn mechanical. So let's have you study mechanical. And Sophie, you want to learn mechanical as well. Body and creativity. So you can also study mechanical. We just got business rank five. Oh, nice. Um, with the business ranks, I have been sort of um, not really cashing them in. I've got three perk points available. But one thing you could do is uh, get cash and say that we're getting education department grants or something. I don't really know. I'll think about that another time. But yeah, there we go. So they're all going to do that. These guys are all over here. Owen is... Um, just sort of hanging out. I might have him have a nice, uh, uh, use the toilet and then have a cup of coffee. And then Tosha's over here eating a, <laughs> eating a piece of pie, apparently. Uh, so I could also have Owen come and talk with Tosha, but, uh, instead I might just get her to come back in here and continue working on her article. Now, most of the time, the kids aren't going to be able to get their paintings finished, which is a little bit unfortunate. And it's another reason that I am kind of tempted to slow the time speed down even further so that they actually have the opportunity to maybe finish a painting because you can see it's already half past two so they only got about a half hour or 45 minutes left of the school day yeah so with this multi-use classroom what i do is i just check what day of the week it is i check what lessons are on and before i summon in the kids i go ahead and make sure the classroom is set up for the classes of the day one thing you really do have to be careful with uh, when playing a school lot in this fashion is that you cannot enter build or buy mode. <laughs> I will, at three o'clock, I'll show you what happens if you do enter build buy mode. Um, so I have the school set up with a mod called the visitor controller to have pretty much every single sim in the neighborhood banned from appearing on this lot. If I do not summon you to this lot, you may not appear here. And what that means is that if you're not an employee or if you're not selectable in this uh, selectable tab, you will immediately despawn from the lot. And so what happens when you enter um, buy mode, I will show you. So it's ticking over to 3 p.m. in a minute here and then go back into live mode is that all of my kids become unselectable and then one by one start despawning from the lot. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a drawback of playing on a community lot. Um, is that, yeah, if, if you accidentally go into build or buy mode while school is running, your students all disappear. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end school. And I'm also now going to make Hannah unselectable. So she's going to despawn as well. Uh, Tosha can stop doing that. She can also uh, go home for the day. And then, yeah, school's, school's out for the day. And then what I do at the end of the school day is essentially I'll just uh, make sure all of the books are put away. I'll make sure all the plates are cleaned up. Oops, she's locked in there. Sorry, honey. <laughs> make sure all the books are put away. Make sure the plates are cleaned up. I'll set up the multi-use classroom for the next day. And that's pretty much it. So then I will send my teachers back home. Any money that they earn, by the way, um, throughout the week, I donate to the town funds. I pretend that families are paying, paying school fees or whatever. So yeah, anything that the business earns, I just don't donate to my town treasury. But yeah, so once the lot is cleaned up, we're going to have them drive home and that'll be it for our school day. Um, so that's it. That's how I play schools. <laughs> um, this 
uh, it obviously is a primary school to the high school will be very similar but a little different um, when I do sort of play the high school and I will load up that lot and show you guys that lot so you can get an idea of what it'll be like but I will play it in basically the same way. Um, some some of the school days as well I have the teachers have like staff meetings um, I'm also working on a random occurrence scenario for schools in particular which I have written down here in my spreadsheet so once per week I might roll um, a random occurrence scenario for the school where um, something special has to happen so we might have school photo day we might do a fire drill we might do a field trip have a school disco have exams have guest teachers a substitute teacher I'll have one of the students act out all day and uh, get in trouble. Friendship day, all scheduled classes are cancelled, all students spend the day making friends instead. Free time for one lesson, swimming lessons, parent teacher interviews or staff meetings. Um, yeah, so I'm working on that um, and I'm still sort of brainstorming some different ideas for things that I can have. You okay, Linda? She's just holding the baby. That's good. Yeah, things that I can have happen randomly um, to make things a little bit more interesting. Okay, so just to show you guys as well, this is my high school that I will be playing. So uh, again, you'll notice the similar objects. Here's the school bell. So this will be how I control school. This high school is based very much so on a mixture of the real school that I went to as a teenager and the school in my local town, hometown. I walked past it one day and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to build that in The Sims. So this little building here is like an old uh, house, which is like the main school office. Um, here's the school office. Here are all the pupil tokens ready to enroll my teenagers into. Here is the principal's office. And again, I've got my time control clock here, so I'll be able to use that. Over here we have the staff room. Uh, where the, the teachers will be able to come and hang out. So that'll be that. Then I have a block of classrooms back here and I have set up uh, two classrooms again. I don't think I'll need more than two classrooms, but if I do, I will be able to do that. So still need to decorate these up a little bit more, but this will be, um, yeah, one of the classrooms for the teenagers. And we've got the uh, class controller here as well as a decorative blackboard there as well. Then another classroom in here. Um, again, I've got my crowd controllers, so I'll be able to move all the kids around. Back here I have a library and I also have a uh, computer study area and I also have a music room because I thought it would be fun to have like a school band maybe, like some of the kids who are interested in music could get one class period a week to, to do school band and come in and, and jam together. I thought that would be fun. Um, and then I've also got a uh, art, dedicated art room in here. So all the kids will come in and have art lessons in here. Uh, and I'll do that in a similar way to how I do it in the primary school where there'll probably be an art teacher. And then I also have this room, which is like a technology lab. So we've got um, some robotics benches, some toy making benches, as well as some woodworking benches, which is by Dee Dee, as well as a class controller in here too. So that'll be my sort of multi-use classroom in there. Uh, I've got some toilets, of course. We've got uh, a big soccer field for PE lessons. And I've also got a gym. So I will have a dedicated sort of PE teacher. Um, and this will be their little office in here. I've got some uh, sort of change rooms and shower rooms here and here. And then, yeah, this is kind of like my gym where people will be able to have PE lessons as well. And um, yeah, that'll be that'll be the high school. And then this area over here will be probably where the, the students mostly hang out during lunch. Um, and I've also got a menu board object here as well so they'll be able to order food from that yeah that's my high school and as I mentioned I will share this below uh, with the lots that I'm sharing as always a little bit of a warning that they do come with a lot of custom content um, so just download at your peril I'm not going to try to make them vanilla for you because it's I, I don't have time but <laughs> yeah if hopefully you like the look of the lots anyway and you're happy to install the CC uh, but if not you can always use clean installer to only install the the buildings I guess and then not include the custom content. But yeah, the reason I designed this high school the way I designed it with like lots of separate little buildings rather than all being in the one big building is again, because that was that is very common in 
particularly I would say rural Australia um, with with schools is to have like lots of little buildings that were all built at different points in time so you can imagine that the original school had like this building and maybe like this building um, and then slowly over time extra rooms have been built so you'll notice that the gym and the um, art and technology center are both a lot more modern in style and I'm pretending in my head canon that they were built a lot later down the track whereas these classrooms and library rooms are all a bit older so just a little bit of lore never hurt anyone I guess <laughs> and these are just decorative by the way these school buses over here they're just deco school buses so yeah, um, as I said, I will share these lots for you below the video if you are interested in downloading them. And I will also very quickly show you guys the smaller primary school, which I will also upload for you. So this neighborhood here is Bayland. This is any of my Twitch followers will recognize this hood. This is a Builder City Challenge, which we play on Twitch. Um, if you're interested, I've got links to my Twitch channel below. And all of the residents of this neighborhood are uh, my followers and subscribers on Twitch, which is a lot of fun. Um, and we do also have a functional school set up over here. This is Bayland Primary School. We don't have a high school yet, but I will uh, load into this lot to show you guys uh, a, an example of a slightly smaller school. If you were looking at my primary school and thinking, oh my gosh, that's a little bit too big for me. Or maybe your town is just a bit smaller and you don't need as much space. So very similar ideas here. Um, we've got uh, the front office is kind of here. So we've got a little office space. We've got a nice comfy staff room. We've got our pupil tokens on the wall, a staff bathroom and the principal's office over here. Then attached to this building down the hall, we also have a big library a music room and an art room um, and this music room is set up more with the idea that the, the students get one-on-one -on -one music lessons uh, so the teacher would sit here and instruct the student as they play the piano this is a uh, nod to my dear mother who is a private music teacher and for most of her career has taught students at home but also will go into schools um, local schools and have a little music room that is her little music room and she will take the kids out of their classes bring them in to a private little room and teach them different musical instruments so mum that one's for you <laughs> and then yeah a little art room here too and then over here we have the main classroom so this is uh, where the kiddly winkies come and do their their classwork um, then we've also got yeah a little outdoor eating area here I converted this big shade cloth object from The Sims 4 because this is again so Australian uh, little playground a little basketball area this is a little cafeteria so this is a little bit different uh, if you wanted to have an actual sort of chef person who comes into the school and cooks meals for the kids uh, you could use this kind of yeah there we go <laughs> you could use this kind of cafeteria area to do so um, and then this little room here doesn't have much in it right now this is kind of just like a little storeroom at the moment um, and again we do also have a tiny little garden area back here where the kidleys uh, Kidly Winkies can learn gardening so oh yeah here's the school bell as well so yeah this lot will also be uploaded for you guys if you are interested in using it uh, you're more than welcome to so that's it that is how I play functional schools in The Sims 2 if you have any questions please feel free to leave me a comment um, if you'd like to watch me play a functional school live again uh, check out my Twitch channel. We do play the school in Bayland. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to stay in tune with the channel. If there's any other sort of like mods or businesses you want to see how I play, let me know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the meantime, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Everyone take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.